First, thanks for having me today and, uh, and greetings from Oasis of the Seas. Uh, as we talked about this morning, we are not seeing any sign of weakness uh, from our guests. Uh, if anything, we've seen acceleration, not just in terms of demand, but also their willingness to pay. You know, Stiefel analyst uh, Jason calling it a mic drop moment really for the entire cruise industry after you reported earnings this morning. You raised your profit outlook, but talk to us about the financing environment at a time where you're trying to build your pipeline. I know you have the Icon coming out next year, one of the world's largest ships, but does that become harder to finance as credit conditions stay tight? Yeah, so, so first of all, whenever we enter uh, a contract for a ship, we always have uh, fully committed financing. So there's no issue with us in terms of uh, gaining access for financing for our ships. And fortunately, we have methodically taken uh, a lot of great action um, on our balance sheet, and uh, we don't really see any need um, in the in the immediate or, or even near term uh, in order to have to access the capital market. So you know, we're generating a lot of cash flow. Um, this business, uh, when it's fully up and operating, which it is now, uh, generates a lot of cash flow and, and uh, allows us to uh, to uh, effectively uh, service uh, our outstanding obligations. Maybe we just have to say it's a bifurcation in the economy. Banking stocks down, but the travel stocks <laughs> outperforming on this resiliency that we're seeing in the consumer. How long can this last? I know you raise your profit outlook, but when it comes to pricing, do you see that remaining strong and the customer being willing to pay up for a cruise going into the second half of this year? Yeah, well, I think there's a lot of great tailwinds for us. There's demographic uh, um, tailwinds. There's secular, like you clearly see, and you can see this in the credit card data, as well as in our data, people shifting from buying stuff to buying experiences. Um, the other thing, which is, you know, we trade still at a pretty significant uh, discount to land-based vacation. And so I think even with the consumer that if, if they evolve to be a little bit mixed, you know, they're, they're going to, you know, fly to value. And, of course, you know, we want to try to close that value gap um, but we see really accelerated demand, and they're, and they're making bookings well into 24 and into 2025. So we have a pretty good sense of what they're looking to do. And, Jason, I'm curious, you know, the last time we had a bad recession, obviously 2008, that was when the consumer was overextended. They were running on fumes. They were right in the middle of the home price collapse. This does feel a little different. So how do you kind of prepare for and expect to navigate through an environment where your business, I hate to say it, but maybe could do okay? And, and if so, does the industry make any sort of consolidation moves? Or do you think that everybody could benefit from some of the tailwinds that you're seeing? Well, I, I think, well, first off, I, I, don't, I don't really see any, any uh, consolidation moves uh, in, in the future. Um, I, what I do see is that I think that there is this flight to value. And of course, the higher quality operators, which we would describe ourselves, uh, we feel are going to win best brands, best ships, best people, um, and the ability to deliver these incredible experiences uh, to our guests. So I think we feel, you know, even in, in choppier times, there is a reality that you know, our guests, our customers who we address, um, they're, they're well employed, uh, they have high, high paying jobs, and they're sitting on a lot of savings. And that puts them in a pretty good place um, as, as the market or the, or the dynamics might change. I think analysts were surprised by the comeback you're seeing in Europe, where itineraries accounted for about 17 percent of your full year capacity. Uh, how does that look going into the summer, Jason? Yeah, well, one of our key differentiators is that, you know, our, our brands are globalized. And so we source our guests from all over the world. So we also source a lot of our guests for Europe out of Europe. Mm. Um, and, and so that platform allows us uh, to really kind of harvest quality demand uh, anywhere in the world. And what we are seeing, while we were a little bit nervous earlier in the year, um, you know, that has completely buoyed itself. Um, and we've seen pretty strong demand trends for Europe here um, as we go into the summer. All right. Stock up 47 percent.